This is a video presentation of Chapter 2, Section 8 in the 8th grade textbook entitled Solving Two-Step Equations. So the first thing we need to talk about here before we can go into the examples are the various rules for solving two-step equations. The rules for solving two-step equations are not really all that different from solving one-step equations. All those rules that we learned when we solved one-step equations like variables on the left, as in keeping the variables to the left of the equal sign, sending our numbers to the right, as in taking all the numbers and moving them to the right of the equal sign, opposite side to the opposite, whenever I want to move something to the opposite side of the equal sign, I do so by doing the opposite, and the ability to flip the sides whenever I need to, those all still hold true here. There's only one new rule that we really need for solving two-step equations. Because this is a two-step equation in name, that means we're going to basically end up moving two things here. And the question will be, what order do we move things in? Well, the thing that's directly attached to the variable, and that will usually be by either multiplication or division, whatever is directly attached to the variable will be the last thing we do. Um, and other than that, the rules are all the same as solving the one-step equations. So let's go ahead and start off with the story problem here. In example one, it says the mechanic's bill to repair Mr. Wong's car was $650. That's a key piece of information. The mechanic charges $45 an hour for labor. That's another key piece of information. And the parts that were used cost $443. Another piece of information. How many hours did the mechanic work on the car? So we have two things that go together to make my total bill here. We have the number of hours spent on labor, and we know that that labor cost me $45 an hour. And then we have the cost of the parts, and no matter how long we work on the car for, the parts are all the same, $443. And that's got to equal my total. So that's what they're starting off here by setting us up with. They're saying that the answer is the number of hours the mechanic worked on the car. The parts cost $443, which we knew. The labor is $45 an hour, but what we don't know is how many hours was spent working on the car. That's what we're going to end up figuring out. And the total bill was $650. So the total bill is equal to the parts plus labor, and we're going to let H represent the hours worked. So we have 650 equals 443 plus 45H. 443 parts plus the $45 an hour labor, 45H, equals the total bill 650. Yes, it is written a little bit backwards, which is something we'll address here in a minute. So let's look at the making a plan step here. The variable is going to be multiplied by 45, and then 443 is added into the result. We'll need to work backwards to solve the equation and we'll undo the operations in reverse order. Subtract 443 from both sides, and then divide both sides of the new equation by 45. So here is the actual solving. The first time today, we actually get to start working with that two-step equation. Now, as we look at working with this equation here, the problem with the book presentation is that they've stuck the variable on the right side. But you know from listening to the introduction that the variable should actually be on the left side. So what I would do that's different from what the book is doing here is I'm actually going to start off and flip the sides just like we would have done with a one-step equation. So I'm going to rewrite this as 443 plus 45H equals 650. The rest of the work will still flow exactly as what the book is showing, or rather what the workbook is showing, but it's going to be slightly backwards as we get towards the end, but does not impact anything. So we would say to ourselves, if I'm solving at this point, we want to keep our variable on the left, and I do indeed have h already on the left side, which is a good thing. And I want to end up sending all my numbers off to the right side. And as you can see, 650 is already over there. So the two things that aren't so proper 
would be 443 and 45. And both of those are now going to have to get sent to the right side. So the question is, which one do we move first? Well, as you heard earlier, when I move things, the thing with that's directly connected to that variable is last to go. So since 45 is directly connected to the variable, it's going to be last to go, which means 443 is going to be the first thing to go. Remember, whenever I want to move something to the opposite side, as in the opposite side of the equal sign, I do the opposite. Since 443 is a positive number there, the opposite of a positive would be a negative, and the negative sign kind of looks like a subtraction sign now, doesn't it? So I'm going to subtract 443 from both sides to start. And as you can see from the book presentation here, when I do that, that leaves me 45H, the 443s cancel each other out, and 45H is going to equal 207, which is what I get when I subtract 443 from 650. So now this is very simple because this looks like your one step equation, a one step multiplication equation. And again, you know we solve it by doing the opposite, and the opposite here being division. I'm going to now divide out 45. Remember, my goal is to get variable, in this case h, all by itself on the left side. And dividing out 45 will make these two cancel out and leave me variable h all by itself. When I do 207 divided by 45, which is a great calculator problem, I get 4.6 and change, but we'll round just a little bit. And we're going to say that the mechanic then, in context of the problem, worked 4.6 hours. Because remember, that's what we were finding, how many hours he worked on the car. So the mechanic worked 4.6 hours on the car. And then what they do in the last step there is they actually go back and check our work. They change h in this original equation, this top line, right here into 4.6 and make sure that the left side equals the right side. You check your equation here the same way you check the one step equation. Plug in your number and work it out. If the left side is the same as the right side, you know you did it correctly. The only thing that would be different about a one step equation here is because it has multiple, comp multiple components, you want to make sure you use the order of operations. Meaning, you'd have to do the 45 times 4.6 first and then add the 443. If you try and do the 443 plus the 45 and then multiply by 4.6, not only have you not used order of operations, but you're going to come up with the wrong answer.